Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. The New York neighborhoods contrast quickly. In a few short blocks, they change from mansion-lined boulevards to unkept streets with mangy tenements. Mr. and Mrs. North, for example, live in a pleasant Greenwich Village apartment on St. Anne's Place. But just around the corner, terror may reign when a group of young boys meet outside a small grocery store. What's up, Buck? You joining the Dodgers? Yeah. I play ball with Mr. Stevenson. I kind of he ain't playing ball with us. Oh, oh. See what I mean? What's the matter? Didn't Stevenson come across? No. So we're gonna beat some brains into his head. With the bat? Sure. Cops catch us with these. It's time for batting practice. All out of that. Let's go. You forgot to leave our money with your clerk, Mr. Stevenson. I didn't forget. There isn't going to be any money. Are you rotten little... Oh! My name is Herbert. Oh, oh, Mrs. Lord, I excuse me. What was all that about? Oh, it was nothing. Please, come in. What can I do for you, Mrs. Lord? Well, I'd like a rubber band for a cat. For a cat? Well, actually, it's more than one cat. It's a whole tribe of cats. And so mm -hmm. I made a catapult. A catapult? Cat catapult. What a language. Well, actually, it isn't a catapult. It's more of a slingshot. A slingshot? Uh -huh. Here it is. Oh, now I know what you mean. We have this in the old country, too. The cats sharpen their claws on it. Oh, no, what you're thinking of is, is a scratch post. A scratch post? In the evening school, they didn't teach me anything like this. Maybe I won't never learn it. Oh, of course you will. You're doing fine. Everyone in the neighborhood is so proud of you. They are. Oh, Mrs. North, you cannot know what it means to come to this country, a stranger, and find the people so kind and good and helpful. If won't be my son. Oh, that's all right. He'll be all right. He's young. Oh, Herman is a good boy. But his friends, this gang, oh, they are bad. Very bad. Well, all children his age are a little wild. Oh, those boys are not wild. They are evil and rotten. They lie and steal and, and have secret meetings. And to them he wants to belong. Well, have you gone to the police? Oh, no, no. I'm afraid of the police. I couldn't go to the police. Oh, but these are different. They're here to help you. Oh, no, no. It was the police who took my husband away. To Buchenwald. Have you ever heard of Buchenwald? Look at me, a woman who looks twice her age. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. North. Why don't you lie down in the back for a while? I'll take care of the store. Thank you, Mrs. North. Oh, what can I do to help you? I want a greeting card. A greeting card? There must be some someplace. What do you call these? Oh, I knew we had some. Is this all you got? Oh, no. We have cigars, cigarettes, uh, films, razor blades. Oh, no, I don't want any of that. I just want to get a card from my boss. The old goat is sick. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry, nothing. He'll outlive all of us. The gang at the office wanted me to pick out a get well card. Well, we have some lovely ones. Um, uh, how's this? Our wish is sweet. Our wish is yummy. We hope you get well in your tummy. Oh, no, no, no good. It's, they're not working on this tummy. 
Oh. Well, how about this one? Our song is happy and not at all dirgery. We hope that you will come out of your surgery. That's good. I like it. How much? Uh, shall we say um, a dollar? Well, you can say it, but I won't pay it. Oh, but that includes a, a condolence card as well, you know, just in case. Oh, say, that's a good idea. It would save me a second trip in case the old boy conked out. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I think I'll send him the condolence card first. <laughs> I made a sale. I heard. Thank you, Mrs. North. And Mrs. North, please do not sail to Herman when he brings tonight the paper. I won't. And don't you worry. Everything will work out just fine. You'll see. Oh, here's just what I want. For the cake? Yes. They meet every night under Jerry's window. Drives them crazy. They're so out of key. I hit them with this. Oh, you hurt them? Oh, of course not. I use marshmallows. Marshmallows? The cats love them. They pick them up and run away and eat them somewhere else. Oh, that's wonderful. I have to order some. Oh, do that. I use tons of them. Well, goodbye. I must be running along now. Goodbye. <laughs> tons of marshmallows. Cats. Catapults. <laughs> what a country. <laughs> Kill that, Pam. I'll kill her and give myself up. No jury would ever convict me. I think I'll put her in my comic strip. I'm running short of laughs. Laughs? I want you to draw her hanging by the neck, falling over a cliff, turning over in a car. Well, it sounds good. What could have happened to her? Yeah, first she loses her key. Then she borrows mine. Then she says she'll be home ahead of me, and now she's an hour and ten minutes late. How about a picture of her? <laughs> Boiling in oil. Wonderful. In deep fat. Yeah. Don't look now, but I think I detect a trim pair of ankles wending our way. Jerry North, and whoever your friend is, what are you doing here on the floor? I'll have you know, young lady, we collapsed from exhaustion waiting for you. Well, why didn't you sit inside? It's ever so much more comfortable. Did you hear what the little lady said? I did. Wonderful acoustics here on the floor. The reason I didn't go inside is that we're locked out. You have the key, the key I gave to you when you lost yours. Oh, excuse me. Well, silly, why didn't you get the superintendent's key? Because that's the key I borrowed to lend to you. Uh, Jerry, I don't know why it is, but you always manage to make everything sound so complicated. Open this door. All right, you don't need to get huffy just because I'm a few minutes late. A few minutes? Th They've changed Dorman twice since we got here. Oh, wait a minute. Why didn't you look for it? You were sitting on it. Don't look at me. I'm a bachelor. Very commercial idea, Maggie. Don't you, Pam? Don't I what? Don't you think a book based on Max comic strip would be a good idea? What comic strip? Where were you during dinner, dear? Sitting right across from you, darling. Stop that. But I'm just doing this for you. After all, you're the one who's annoyed by the cats. I sleep like a top. The name is McCoy. And for your information, darling, he is the creator of Trip Henley Detective, the foremost newspaper comic strip in the country. Oh. Are you the real McCoy? Seems rather hard to believe, doesn't it? Why, oh, you're famous. Everybody knows that cute Trip Henley. I must start reading it again. My wife is nothing if not the soul of diplomacy. Pam, will you please stop that for a minute? I'm trying to convince Mac that he should put Trip Henley into a book. Uh, now, what do you think of the idea? Well, honestly, I don't think the children can pay three dollars for a book. Children? Mrs. North, Trip Henley is read by millions of people daily from every walk of life. 
Why, both the man in the White House and the guy who sweeps off his steps make a grab for the paper every morning just to find out what Henley is up to. Children. Children. Why? Why? Gee whiz. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. All creative people are touchy, though, aren't they? Why, well, I can't even touch Jerry. Since when? Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, too, Mrs. North. I liked your dinner. My Elsa loved your brandy. Jerry, I, I can't go along with you on that book idea. But why not, Mac? Because I'm running out of ideas, that's why. I haven't got enough left for my strip, much less for a book. Gee, what a hot that marshmallow. Does it. Now, the police will probably be here any minute. No, I'm done. The apartment's dark. Oh, fine. You probably knocked out the lights and the tenant. Now, Pam, will you please stop trying to hit cats before they break down this door and arrest us all? Oh, Jerry, you're such an alarmist. I told you. They're here. Now hide that thing. Good evening. Oh, Mrs. Helser. Come in, come in. No, no, please. I do not want to disturb. Here's your paper. But where's Herman? Why didn't he bring it? I do not know, Mrs. North. He didn't come home. Oh, I'm nearly out of my mind. He always said he wants to run away, and now he has done it. I'll never see him again. Oh, no, no, of course you will. Herman's a good boy, and he loves you. He wouldn't do anything to hurt you. Yes, but these other boys, a hundred dollars they want from him to join the gang. A hundred dollars to become a thief like they are. But I won't give it to them, even if I have. Here, Mrs. Elser, drink this. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm intruding. You have a guest. Not at all. This is Mr. McCoy, Mrs. Helser. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Mr. McCoy is a famous cartoonist. He draws Trip Henley, detective. Oh, I'm honored to meet you, sir. Even Herman loves Trip Henley. He reads it every day. You should see, he's really a good boy. Now, what's all this about $100? It's blackmail. Only because Herman is so anxious to belong. When we first came to this country, they laughed about him. At his clothing, his accent, everything. But now they say they'll accept him if he pays a hundred dollars to join. And if not? Then they say they'll take it anyway, rob the store. And that I will do nothing because my son is part of the gang. Very neat. When do they threaten to do this? The only time where I have even near a hundred dollars, is at the end of the month, if customers pay. That's three weeks from now. Jerry, there must be something we can do. Well, I'd call Wigand in on the case, but that would only get the kid in trouble. Jerry. Listen, Jerry, I have a wonderful idea. Why doesn't Mac put this story in his comic strip? What? Well, Herman reads it every day. It would show him that people know what his gang is up to. It would be a warning. Oh, I don't know, Mrs. North. It's... Sounds a little screwy. But you said you were running out of ideas. This gives you a chance to involve Trip Henley in something worthwhile, something true. Mm, I don't know. Might work out. Of course it will. Mrs. Helter and her son came to this country seeking shelter, seeking safety. We can't just stand by and do nothing while a bunch of teenage hoodlums get them into trouble. Mrs. North? My ulcer thanks you. Well, come on. Let's get over to the store before the boy gets back. Mac will need background. Daddy's little helper. Come on, Mac. Come in. But you won't use my face. People would know me. My son would... Only in the last trip, honey. You know, for the big payoff. Wow. Got all you need, Mac? Almost. Wonderful face, Mrs. Helzer. Oh. Makes me want to paint again. Don't you worry. Mr. Mac knows best. Who's the leader of this miniature mob, Mrs. Helsey? A boy called Monk. He's rotten and evil like a young stormtrooper. Where does he hang out? They have their meetings in a little shack. Two blocks from here in an empty lot. I ought to get a peek at this Monk if I'm going to have him tangled with Trip Henley. I think I'll call him the Bandanda Bandit. <laughs> when you finish up there, uh, why not let's take a run over there, Mac? Okay. Uh, do you mind if I borrow this camera and, and some film? Oh, you take anything you want, Mrs. Snow. Where are you going, Pam? I'll be right back. 
so kind of you people to take all this trouble. Mother! Now you have to go. Please, quickly. Mother, where are you? Just here, just blocking up. Who are those people in the store? Nobody, just customers. Oh, my son, why do you make for me such trouble? You don't know what trouble is, Mrs. Helfer. How come you beat me all the time? I'm sharp, see, I'm sharp. Think the old lady's gonna come across? She will when Monk get through with her. What happened, Monk? Did you get it? Scared the woods out of her. She'll come across. What happens if she don't? I'll make her sorry she ever got out of a prison camp. What are you doing up there? Uh, taking pictures. Well, get down off there. Oh, certainly. I didn't know there was anybody inside. Well, there's no need to be rude about it. Help me down. Get down the same way you got up. I will. Don't waste it on me, lady. Just hand over the camera. Oh, I certainly will not. You have Give to... Give me like... the camera. <gasps> Here's your picture box, lady. Now, what's all this about? Well, uh, well it's, it's really quite simple. Uh, you see... Uh... I'm on a committee that's working for slum clearance in this neighborhood. It's outrageous the way they've let it run down. We're going to build a playground. You know, to keep children like you off the streets and out of trouble. <laughs> that's what I call a real noble idea. Ain't it, fellas? Now, listen to me. You tell your committee we like it like this, see? We don't want no playground. And stop snooping around here. Now, beat it. Oh, Herbert, uh, anything wrong? No, Mrs. North. You know the screwball? I deliver a paper every night. Well, then why don't you go home and read it, huh? I think we were going to build a swimming pool. Hey. What'd your lady say? She... She says she doesn't have the money. Nah. Now listen, you little punk. I want that money. You give me that money or I'll take that store and I'll throw it right in the street.
You and the funny papers, Monk. What do you want? Hand over some money or I'll wreck the joint. And be quick about it. Aha! I'll fix you. Take that. This is what happens to all foolish kids who think they can beat the law. Come along, monk. Sign, McCoy. Timmy. Oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Mack. That ought to do it. When do you plan to break it? Tomorrow's evening edition. Hope it works. It's got to. They plan to make good their threat tomorrow at midnight. You think monk will see it? Oh, he'll see it. I fixed it with Herman to deliver one to the shack for free compliments of the Slum Clearance League. Oh, dear, you're wonderful. <laughs> A dirty rat. Who tipped them off? You? No. No, I didn't do it. Then it must have been your mother. No. How could you? She doesn't know him. Is that your mother's face or isn't it? Well, if he thinks he's got me stopped, he's got another thing coming. I'm going over to that store now. No. 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 Mark. 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 Listen, Pug. You do as I tell you to and your mother won't get hurt. Come on, act as if nothing's wrong. You're hurting my arm. I'll do worse <laughs> than that if you make one wrong move. You see this? You can make a hole in the back of your head bigger than a basket. Remember that, because I'm going to be right behind you. I figure you go around front of the store, see the coast is clear. Okay. All right, come on. Mother! Mother! Look. Laura. Who is it? I am sorry. It's, it's me, Mother. Oh, my darling, I couldn't sleep. Mother! <laughs> Jerry, there's no answer for Mrs. Helser at the store. She's probably asleep. But I told her I'd call and find out what effect the comic strip had on the boys. Don't you think we ought to go over there? We've got two hours yet before they make good their threat. Well, I'm uneasy. Well, now, don't tell me your woman's intuition is hinting at something wrong. Oh! Yes, I did it. I told the man. He was here in the store. Mrs. North took your picture. Let the whole world see how filthy, rotten you are. Let everybody who is good and kind see your dirty, evil face. You foreign scum. His mother! I want that money or I'll take it. I'm warning you for the last time. Where is it? I would rather be dead than see my son become like you. He's going to the cops. No, he ain't. I know where he's gone. I'm warning you. You call the cops, you'll never see Herman alive again. What? Jerry, I'm terribly worried. Maybe we'd better get over there. Come on. Oh, Miss North! Miss North! He's going to kill my mother! Take it easy, son. Nothing like that's going to but happen. But he is! It's all my fault! I just wanted to belong to the gang! I didn't know they were like that! Pam, give him some water. I'll call the police. Feeling better? Drop that. Drop that phone. You, turn around. Turn around. I said turn around. Jerry, I finally hit something, and it wasn't even a cat. It was a rat. I cannot tell you how grateful I am to both of you. Pam, what are you doing over there? I'm picking out a card. Who for? For Monk. I'm going to send a special delivery to his cell. I think this is appropriate. Bars, bars everywhere. And not a drop to drink. Everybody's happy that you wound up in the clink. 
Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy. A John W. Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilms. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSales. This has been a film presentation.